Negron Hill Service in honor of the late 
Senator Rodolfo Biazon is hereby declared open. Please rise for the Lord's Prayer to be sung by Coro Cantabile. After the doxology, please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Honorable Vicente C. Soto III will now deliver his eulogy. A well-known novelist once said, everyone's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. Today, we celebrate the life of an exceptionally courageous, 
well-respected and very inspiring man. Senator General Rodolfo Paul Piazza. It has been said that the best speech delivered in services such as what we have today do not emanate from the speaker, but from the deed of the person being honored. Life in itself is challenging. However, for some, including Senator Pompeo, life has been extra challenging. Senator Pombiaso had humble beginnings. He grew up in poverty and took odd jobs to support his education. He hurdled being a cadet of the Philippine Military Academy, March 1961. Adversities did not hinder him to climb both the political and military leaders as the leader. He became a fearless legislator and a well-decorated military official, all attributable attribut attribut to his own hard work, perseverance, and for fighting for what is right. <clears throat> as a legislator, being both a member of the Senate and the House of Representatives, he was the first PMA alumni to be elected as senator and was well known for his advocacy for low cost housing and the benefits of our beloved soldiers. While he advanced those causes, Senator Diazon has made sure that uh, all sectors of the society will benefit from the deals that he has crafted. Thus, he authored the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, the Rental Reform Act of 2002, Comprehensive and Integrated Shelter Finance Act, and Act providing for the modernization of the armed forces of the building, and an Act amending PD 1752, the mandatory for civic membership and other notable laws, including the creation of the Karada region, Republic of 1791. As a military official, General Biaso became the first and only Armed Forces Chief of Staff from the Philippine Marine Corps and received various medals and awards during his tenure in the military, which include the Distinguished Service Star, Gold Cross Medal, Outstanding Achievement Medal, and Bronze Cross Medal, among others. Most of us will recall that he was first elected in 1992 as Senator. We were party mates, not only in the party, but together with Senator Joey Lina and Senator Cordy Vancato, were our party mates. On the other side of the bench, of course, were uh, Senator Chicata, Senator Nishi Posehe, We were together in the team division because in 1992 we had to elect 24 senators. Um, there were 24 LDP candidates, and in our team, which was called Talimba, was Senator Lina and Senator Diaso and myself. Talimba stood for Tamano, Lina, Monfort, Diaso. Alvarez and Soto. And our team were always together during the sorties. I am telling this because of some very light but uh, nice moments or anecdotes involving Senator Piazza. Um, there was one sortie wherein uh, uh, the team of Senator Angara, Ed Angara, and Nazari. Uh, was where I had about speaking in a, in a, in a, in a campaign rally 
and the last to speak in their team was uh, Ramon de Villa. And in our team, the first one to speak would be Senator Piazzo. So as Senator Rivilla was, or Ramon de Villa, then was ending his speech, he wanted to remind people who he was. And he said, uh, I will uh, Bibigay ko ang balita ng aking mga pelikula sa mga tao, sabi niya. And then he said, huwag niyong kalimutan, ako si Kapitan Ingo, kumapari ng bala. Next to, of course, there was, uh, he was received in the applause. Next was Senator Biasan. So when Senator, or when Paul Biasan stood, he wanted to introduce himself. He said, uh, I am General Rodolfo Biasson. There was no reaction. So he said, Hindi ako kumakain ng bala. Tanke kinakain ko. It was met with thunder of applause. And the rest is, is history. He was elected senator. And a funny anecdote also. I could not help but tell the story. And I'm sure he will be smiling at us right now as I I say it. His campaign pitch always centered on the young boys. So he always looked for, he always looked, before he going up the stage, he always looked for a boy. The young boy, uh, six, seven, seven years old, and uh, he would feed him what to say. He would be asking him questions, and the boy would answer, Okay, you know, and then uh, he would uh, talk to the boy, and then he would tell the people that the future of this boy will not be uh, realized. Kapag hindi nyo kami tinulungan sa mga kalal sa Senado. So one time, he was about to speak, and another sorti, and then he suddenly, I was supposed to be last, but he talked to me and said, we don't have a lot. <laughs> he was fun. He was fun to be with. Definitely. Back in 2006, during an interview in the Capitol Hill, Senator Biasson narrated that during the 2003 Oakwood mutiny, he called Greg. Senator Ronasa called great for help to prevent bloodshed among soldiers. I arrived there first to escort Greg and was briefed by Paul on the situation. There was a deployment of the two opposing sides and there was cocking of guns. The very thing that Greg Ronasa and Paul Biasson wanted and I wanted to prevent. I recall Senator Nassan and Senator Biasso jumping in the middle to motion for them to stop the two sides from firing their guns. Perhaps I will let Senator Nassan elaborate on what happened thereafter. With all that, Senator John Biasso had accomplished in his earthly life it is undeniable that he is an inspirational man. His unwavering determination is unmatched. Senator Biasson had achieved greatness despite the obstacles that he faced throughout his life. He is the personification of the aphorism, and I quote, success is no accident. It is hard perseverance learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. End of God. He is a truly dynamic and multifaceted individual, a family man, an excellent soldier, an extraordinary legislator, freedom fighter, and defender of democracy who relished his life to the fullest. But about all his accomplishments, he will be most remembered 
as a good father, a loving husband, and a dear friend. So, Senator General Rodolfo Biasol, dear friend Paul, your life is an inspiration to all of us. May you rest well in the bosom of our Father. The Honorable Jose D. Lina Jr. will now deliver his eulogy. Let me first express my, our family's uh, condolences to all the loved ones of the Senator Rodolfo Fong Yasin, most especially to Kwan Chi, and uh, to the children, all accomplished in their own, in their own right, Rita, Rino, and Duki, former congressman, and now mayor of uh, Montenegro City. There is no doubt, Senator Fong was a great and outstanding Filipino, as already described by uh, former Senate President uh, Tito Soto. He's an officer and a gentleman, a warrior and statesman, a devoted public servant whose integrity and compassion for the people are indeed worth emulating. And a man who rose to greatness from very humble beginnings. All the accolades given him these past few days are certainly, are certainly true. And all throughout his life, in the service of the Filipino people, Fong was the epitome of humility, simplicity, and decorum. That's how I fondly remember the military general, turned senator, who became my colleague at the Senate in the early 1990s, when he first served as senator in the 9th Congress. Although he was older than me, with a wealth of experience and had already achieved every soldier's dream of rising to the pinnacle of success as chief of staff, he still found it necessary to seek counsel when he entered the world of politics. I was the youngest senator at that time, and yet he considered me a senior politician. For him to give much value and defer to whatever advice I gave him certainly speaks volumes on his profound humility and all his accomplishments then. Of course, the accomplishments as a highly decorated military general were tremendous. Among the greatest feats was crushing the deadliest coup attempt against the administration of then President Corey Aquino in 1989. He certainly played a pivotal role in defending democracy and the integrity of the armed forces when he was commanding, commanding general then of the NCR Defense Command. In his transition to politics after retiring from military service, Senator Fong had no qualms in showing his eagerness to learn new things, he never stopped. And that's when I began to feel it deeply honored, to feel deeply honored by his sincere desire to seek advice from me, whom he deemed a senior politician. He quickly realized the wisdom of having to shed off the strict demeanor he used to exhibit as a military man and give way to more expression of compassion, understanding, tenderness, 
and other pleasing traits of an exemplary public servant to be able to connect more effectively with the people. Sabi ko sa kanya, General, and joke, crack ka rin ng jokes. Huwag masyadong seryoso. Spice your speech with light stories and Senator Tito Soto described one anecdote where he showed he had already transitioned to being a good speaker as a politician. So when we were together at the campaign trail during the 1992 elections, and I remember Monchi as part of the group, Senatorial candidates Pong, Senatorial candidate Pong also quickly realized, and I already described it, how he transitioned from being a very stern and strict and uh, um, serious speaker to change his manner of speaking. All the serious talk he was uh, accustomed to in the military had to be put aside. He knew he had to spice his talk with humor and something like to be more effective in getting his message across the voters. Yes, I remember the story about the boy. He would always present during uh, his uh, campaign speech to emphasize the point, the point that indeed the future belongs to this young man. When he first won a, sen a sen Senate seat, he, his humility remained intact. Simply put it. He was open-minded, not argumentative, and he always had his feet on the ground. I witnessed firsthand how he always conducted himself with decorum, not only during plenary proceedings, but also in committee hearings. The word is decorum. Including when he was Senate uh, Chairman uh, committee chairman on urban planning, housing, and resettlement, where he was the chairman and I was the vice chairman. So I watched him very closely, and I saw the greatness in him. A senator for three terms, as already mentioned by Senator Tito, he had accomplished a lot. Many bills he authored became laws of the land, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, Rental Reform Act, Comprehensive and Integrated Shelter Finance Act, which I co-authored with him and even co-sponsored with him, and RA 7898, which provides for the modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines. When he retired from politics, he continued to be an inspiration to many Filipinos who looked up to him as a statesman, who who exemplified the virtues of patriotism and love of country. Every now and then, I would see him on television, hear him over the radio, read him in print, sharing his invaluable insights on recurring issues concerning our country's sovereignty and sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea and the need to be united against foreign aggression. For being a paragon of humility, simplicity, decorum, and honor, there is no doubt that Senator Pong was truly an outstanding Filipino who will be sorely missed. That we can find solace in the assurance that his legacy as a great Filipino would inspire many others, especially the young. Again, our deepest condolences to all his loved ones. Senator Pong, we will miss you. And may God grant our beloved Senator Pong eternal peace. The Honorable Gregorio P. Juanasan II will now deliver his eulogy. Sa mga nagmamahal, 
kay uh, Manong Pong Biasol at uh, sa mga minamahal ni Senator Biasol. The public service career of Rodolfo Gaspar Biasol started in a monastery in Baguio called the Philippine Military Academy where uh, young men were trained to live like monks, fight and die when and if necessary in the only battleground that mattered, the hearts and minds of the very same people whose lives, liberty, and property they were duty-bound to protect. They were bound by vows of courage, integrity, loyalty, poverty, obedience, and celibacy. But celibacy took the form of optional. No other calling had this job description. When a Manungpong transition from the military, to peacekeeper, to serious lawmaker. Those who marched, worked, bled, cried, laughed, fought with him, and occasionally against him. I will not elaborate because it will be embarrassing for me. He was every adversary's dream. Matangkad. Isang tingin mo lang, even through the crosshairs of a sniper's scope. Ang daling ma-identify. He was always in command. He was always in front. Never from the rear. Ironically, he was every fellow legislator's nightmare. During hearings, during plenary debates. Ang kulit. Ang tagal magtanong. Maiinis ka sa kanya, pero mas maiinis ka sa sarili mo, lalo na pag hindi mo alam yung sagot. Kung hindi ka niya kayang ganin sa logic, sa reason, papagurin ka niya. Pag nilubayang ka na ni Manong Po sa debate, sa interpolation, Para kang gulay, gusto mo nang mamatay. <laughs> Mamonchi, please don't take this in the wrong light. May biro ang sabi nun na Senate President dito. Sabi namin, matang tayo magtanong ni Manong po. Siguro ayaw umuwi na maaga. <laughs> <laughs> Dahil pagdating niya, madaling araw, tatanungin siya ni Mamonchi, matang ka lang, ilumamig na yung ulang. Until we realized that 24-7 was not enough for him to explain and share what was in his heart and mind as a soldier to perpetually dreams of peace, unity, and the prosperity that we deserve. Ask him to Soto, Senate President Soto, during the OPPO incident. We intervene to prevent bloodshed. And the deeper reason was its effect on the national economy, on our people. The divisiveness that is caused up to now by the armed conflict. Over the 37 years since 1986, when I first met him, and the 28 years since 1995, when I joined the Senate, we agreed on certain things. He always told us that as a legally authorized armed group, to decide to go out of barracks, break tradition, and intervene in the political life of the nation is as irreversible as squeezing toothpaste out of that tube. You cannot take it back. You must be willing to pay the price, the personal cost in your career, your family, your honor, even your life. 
then you must look at the net effect on the nation and the people. You claim to win. You must not take sides politically. And when you do your cost-benefit and risk-benefit analysis, you must make sure that the cure is not worse than the sickness. We disagreed only on one thing, methodology. Manong Pong and I were not separated by partisan politics, ideology, or party affiliations. We were only separated by varying thresholds of patients, being a little younger. How did we resolve our differences? We decided to define more what we are for than what we are against. We decided that nation building is work in progress and that soldiers must not be neutral, must be neutral politically, not the Praetorian Guard or private security agency of any administration. And that the problems are more systemic than personality oriented. But we agreed almost to the point of arguing passionately that our children are our most precious, strategic, renewable resource. Our next generation of citizens and leaders. And we agreed on the ancient definition of heroes and heroism, which I will mention later on. Our children are our legacy. All of them are better than us. So just imagine our grandchildren. Awesome. Pong Blasso, soldier, lawmaker, statesman. But again, we cannot give what we do not have. So his most meaningful and challenging roles were as father, grandfather, Lolo, and husband. So Richie and Herb, Franz and Alonso, Josh, Rob and Emma, Sophia, Reno, Jean, Ariel and Morgan, Mikey, Nikki, Rufi, Trina, Carlo, Anton, Tino, and Enzo. Mamonchi, I know for a fact, and with certainty, how much he loved all of you. Please don't ask why, basta alam ko. Manongbong, Atang, loved you as much, if not more than, he loved this blessed country of ours. And when duty called, it was always agony for him to choose in favor of a short-term sacrifice for a long-term personal benefit that could be down to serving the highest national interest. I last saw Manong Kong 14 April, his 88th birthday. Two old warriors coming full circle, talking about the country, the country, and the country. Not sure where to begin and how to end. Ang higpit ng yakapan namin pagdating ko, nakatapat yun sa first floor. Nagyakapan uli kami, magpaalam ako. I did not want to let go, hoping that some of that inner strength would rub off so we could help continue where he left off. Tuming kinatanong kami, oh, Colonel, Senator, kailan ka ba nagsinador? Sabi ko, nagsinador ako nung panahon, hindi na nililon. Ni Nasoto, ni na Estrada, ni na Ejercito, ni na Contiveros, ni na Lina, ni na Angara, ni na Padilla, ni na Villar, ni na Pimentel, ni na Tatan, ni na Mercado, ni na Gordon, ni na Pagsaysay. Tanungin niyo sila. How we comported ourselves, serious lawmakers. Differentiating between trial by publicity and national security. 
Rodolfo Gaspar Biason Tata Manong Kong Walk the talk and showed by living example that when ordinary imperfect men together I underscore the word together dream pray work hard and sacrifice to build a strong sovereign nation for the next generation they all become heroes The Honorable Franklin M. Drillon will now deliver his eulogy. My dear friends, <clears throat> a pleasant good morning to all of you. With profound sadness, we gather in this august chamber and join the whole nation in, mount, in mourning the passing of former Senator Rodolfo Biazza, a giant of a man who we all finally call Paul. I have personally witnessed the events that earned him the respect and gratitude of the whole nation. Respect he earned as a soldier and as a civilian, as a legislator. Against all odds, he defended democracy and helped wash the 1987 and 1989 coup attempts against them for us all. I was a member of the cabinet and Wong was in the military service. And all of those good results were happening. So Greg, you can imagine in the briefings of Paul how many times your name was mentioned. I would not be pretty here, but you can be. But that was how Paul was. But he would often tell me a highlight of his military day was his being a superintendent of the Philippine military. Why? Because that institution, because that institution molded the minds of the soldiers. And Wong was a model to these young cadets who wanted to join our armed services. Very critical was the role of Wong in molding the military establishment of our country. He was a modern soldier, worthy of the emulation. It was a position of the superintendent of the Philippine Military Academy that was fitted for Pong because in his entire military career, he embodied patriotism, integrity, and professionalism. Pong chose to enter the Philippine military academy, even if he passed the West Point and U.S. Naval Academy examination. Pong's phenomenal rise from PME superintendent to commandant of the Philippine Marines and later chief of staff of the armed forces of the Philippines was a testament to his strong sense of duty and an infringing commitment to the world. One of the many highlights in Paul's career that I remember was in 1991, during the deliberation on who was going to be the next chief of staff. If I recall correctly, I was in general secretary then. And let me share with you that the deliberation on who the next chief of staff would be. It was very short. 
there was no doubt that Paul alone deserved that position as commander of the armed forces. There was no doubt that General Rodolfo Piazza was the right man for the job. For no one can question his capability, his dedication to public service, his loyalty to the in the battlefields where he was posted as a young military officer, he was fearless and undaunted, even in the face of death. His, his uncommon valor inspired countless young officers and soldiers to bravely defend democracy at all costs. He transitioned from being a high-ranking military officer to a civilian position with relative ease. And I remember very well the campaign of 1995 and when Wong and I ran together in the same Tito described how Wong, before this campaign uh, speech, would go down, look for a young kid, and he would always brief the young kid. So, but one time, the kids that picked up to the state did not follow his instruction. So, he ran on the ship, he ran on the ship, he ran on the ship, he Ano? Gusto mo maging doktor? Hindi po kong doktor. Bakit kong doktor? Ang tatay ko po, driver. So, but, and so Paul was, this was support by surprise, but continued to explain why he should be uh, in the side. I remember, you know, Paul was a kind of man Wala pong pinapatawad niya. Pag may nakikita ng dapat, dapat uh, pansinin, talaga ang pinapansin niya. I remember, and the record of the Senate to show, he stood up one time in order to complain why the Philippine mission in New York was so, was so in a state of discipline na may mga scaffolding sa side. Do you think, we, we thought that it was that's uh, not such a great importance. But to him, every little bit which could erode the dignity of his beloved Philippines was worth his time to be able to bring on the floor of his own. Up to his twilight years of his life, Bong only had our beloved nation's best interest at heart. Indeed, Bong's life and work are inspiring and worthy of the human. He will always be remembered as someone who defined all odds and bravely faced all colossal challenges in life as stone. His was a life well lived. Today, with a heavy heart, we all bid farewell to the Prof. Bongia, the Senate colleague a decorated military officer, a patriot, and Kumonji, Gucci, Reno, and Group, Mila, and I, over our sincerest and deepest support. You are in officers and prayers in this most difficult and sad time of the world. They say that old soldiers never die. They just fade away. Bong, you may have physically left us, but your patriotism, your love for country, your dedication to public service will never fade away. It will be remembered and emulated by generations to come. Father Bong, we are forever grateful for your contributions to our nation. Your legacy will continue to live in our hearts, 
not only of your loved ones and the people who have known you, but also in the heart of freedom and democracy in the loving people. Rest well home in God's last month. My dear friends, deal with you.
The Honorable Robin Hood C. Padilla will now deliver his eulogy. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إسمع بكوكو بيكو أتى بقيك دلهم هذي كامي جابو نما أخينا أنا أنت إسمع بالله أما isang tunay na officer gentleman na nakilala ko po noong panahon noong ako po ay nasa kasikatan ng aking pag-aartista ako po ay uh, tinimbitahan ng Viva Film na gumanap po bilang uh, uh, batang lieutenant Rodolfo Biasol naalala ko pa po yung panahon na yun sapagkat Nagkaroon po ng konting uh, dramatic na uh, eksena sa diva. Dahil nung inalok po nila yung pelikula, katatapos lang po namin gawin ng mata. Ito po yung isa sa mga pelikulang uh, nagpakita po ng kabayanihan ng ating mga kasundaluhan sa Bindanao. Nung uh, dumating po ako sa diva, sinabi po nila, istorya ni uh, General Biaso. Ako po ay uh, naurungan nung panahon na yun. Dahil ako po ay uh, nakapabilang sa grupo ng aking uh, leader na si General uh, Kernel Gregorio Monasa. Ako po nung panahon na yun ay uh, Ram. Kaya sabi ko po sa Viva, eh, Boss Big Boss, baka hindi ko magawa itong pelikula to. Sabi nga, mag-usap muna kayo ni General. Kailangan mo usap kayo magharap kayo. Nagkaroon po kami ng pagkakataon na magkita. Doon ko po na abay parang six feet tall po yata. Ako po yung nanglilit. Nung nakaharap ko po siya, baka ako pompyangin ito. Matandaan na ito. Laking tao po eh. Sabi niya, ano ka ba ito? Na habang nagkukwento po ang ating po mga ginagalang at pinamahal ko po mga sinador. Para naalala ko po na para akong bata na nasa harap niya. Sabi niya, ikaw ba, iho, artista ka ba o rebelde? Sabi ko, artista po. Artista ka pala. Dapat, pag-usayan mo kung ano yung talino mo. Basahin mo itong script, tingnan mo, at nandito ako para pakinggan ko anong opinion mo. Binasa ko po. Inantay po niya ako. Ganun po siya, katulad po ng inyong kwento, napakakalmado po niya, pero nakakatakot po. Kasi nakatingin po talaga siya, hindi po niya inaalis yung tingin niya ang magbinabasa ko po yung script. Nakita ko po doon pati po yung love story ng mga po ninyo. Nasa kalagitnaan po ng uh, labanan sa Mindanao, eh, nabuo po yung kanilang uh, love story. At, uh, may eksena nga po doon na uh, yung binobomba, yung uh, tunay po yung sinabi ng aking uh, Kermel Sir, Gregory Unasan, na hindi po siya talaga dumadapa kailanman sa laban. Lagi po siyang nakatayo. Kaya po, nagkaroon po kami ng uh, magandang pagkakaintindihan at sinabi ko po sa kanya, sige po, gagawin ko na po yung pelikula. At uh, alala ko pa po, nung pagtayo namin sa upuan, nagsaluto po ako sa kanya. Sabi ko, Sir, uh, idol ko na po kayo ngayon. Hindi po natapos doon ang usapan sapagkat pagkaraan po ng ilang panahon, na-wanted naman po ako. Ako naman po ay uh, napunta sa kabundukan ng Camarines Norte. Hindi ko po makakalimutan yun. Nagpadala pa po siya ng filler na kung gusto ko sumarender ako sa kanya. Hindi ko po makakalimutan yun. Sabi niya, hindi kita pababayaan, walang makakasakit sa iyo. Hindi lamang po natuloy yung pag-surrender ko sa kanya dahil inagaw na po ako ng uh, sariling army ni Bidel, ng SAF noong panahon na yun. Doon na po ako napasurrender. Ngayon po, hindi po ako makapayag na 
hindi makapagsalita sa pulpit na ito. Sapagkat magsasalita naman po kung hindi bilang artista, kundi isang isang Muslim. Alam niyo po sa labanan, napakahirap pong humanap ng mga opisyal na marunong bumalang sa kalaban. Marunong magpakita ng compassion sa kalaban. Diyan po nakilala si Lieutenant Rodolfo Piaso. Sa kainitan po ng gera sa Mindanao, wala po akong kahit isang nabalitaan mula sa mga matatandang mga rebelde na nagkaroon po ng pangaabuso si Lieutenant Rodolfo Piaso. Sinasabi ko pong Lieutenant sapagkat yun po yung kainitan ng labanan sa Mindanao, yung totoong labanan. Siya po ay nakipaglaban doon at wala pong isang kwento na siya ay may pinaslang, sinaktan, pinabuso ng mga kapatid ng Muslim. Sapagkat sa kanya po, tunay mananaig yung officer and a gentleman. Katunayan, sabi nga po ng mga matatandang mga Muslim na lumaban para daw po siyang yung panahon ng crusade na itinatawag pong dalawang matinding Uh, naglaban ng panahon na yun, si Richard the Lionheart at si Salubutin. Siya po ay inahambing ng mga Muslim kay Richard the Lionheart. Siya po ay hindi kailanman natatawagin ng mga Muslim na kalaban. Siya po ay isang tunay na tumayo para ipaglaban ng Republika at hindi po paghiwalay-hiwalay ang Pilipinas. Sana po tandaan po natin. Hindi ko po siya may papakilala sa inyo bilang isang mambabatas dahil hindi po kami nag-abot. Pero isang officer, isang sundalo, sana mga mahal kong kasundalungan, sundan natin ang kanyang halimbawa. Pwede po natin ganapan ang ating tungkulin ng may paggalang sa kalaban. At kailanman, hindi po siya makakalimutan dahil yung pagmamahal niya sa inang bayan ay nakikita ang anino ni General Luno, General Ricarte, General Manbar, at tunay na siya po ang kaduktong ng katipunan. Tunay po ang sinabi ng ating uh, binagalang na Senator uh, Franklin Dillon, ang mga sundalong kumitad kailanman ay hindi mamamatay, sila ay maglalaho lamang at nagdiriwang sa kalagitan. Maraming salamat po. The Honorable Chingoy Ejercito Estrada will now deliver his eulogy. We gather here today to honor the life and legacy of a remarkable individual, decorated soldier, lawmaker, statesman, and a public servant. We pay tribute to his team, former colleague, was left an indelible mark on our political landscape. I share the profound grief of millions of Filipinos, especially those whose lives he touched here at the Senate and in the House of Representatives upon the passing of our dear colleague, Senator Rodolfo Pong Gaspar Piazzo. My deepest condolences go to the grieved family, Mrs. Monchi Piazzo, Rita, Reno and Mayor Ruby. Intimidating, forceful, and inspired. That's how I would sum up the person I came to know and worked with for six years during this 13th and 14th Congress. I remember feeling intimidated by him the first time I met him during the 1998 presidential campaign period. I joined some of the sorties 
kung dilaban na makabayan masok Pilipino or not. The Umbrella Political Coalition Party of the Opposition to help campaign for the presidency of my father, former President Joseph Estrada. Senator Biasu then, seeking a fresh term, landed sixth in the senatorial race. Patangkad, matigas, malalim ang boses. Sino ba naman ang hindi may intimidate sa kanya? But as we went through our grueling campaign schedule leading to the election day, I had the privilege of getting to know him personally and his amusing sense of humor. He was a man of forceful character, possessing considerable insight and diplomatic skills. He, exem he exemplified these traits when he co-sponsored the Senate resolution concurring with the Visiting Forces Agreement or the VFA ratification in 1999 as then chairman of the Senate Committee on National Defense and Security. And at that time, I was still serving as the mayor of San Juan. By the time I was elected as a senator in 2004, I had the privilege of working alongside with Senator Pong and witnessing his tireless efforts and dedication in championing every bill and fighting for every cause. Beyond the titles and the accolades, he was a true servant of the people. Throughout his tenure as a senator, Senator Pong was guided by a moral compass that demanded accountability, transparency, and fairness. He believed in the power of unity and collaboration, forging alliances and crossing party lines to achieve meaningful progress for our nation. And if my memory serves me right, when I was still Senate President Pro Tem, during the time of Senate President Mar uh, Manny Villar and Senate President Juan Paul Cedri, I used to preside, preside during the Senate proceedings. At pag tumayo na si Senator Gordo, at nagtaas ng kamay si Senator Pong, sabi ko, patay na ito. Kaya mga mga sa mga dito. <laughs> Sa haba ng interpolation, sa haba ng debate, but he talks with sense. A lot of sense of humor. That's why I learned a lot from him. And I'm sure my former colleagues here in the Senate during that time learned a lot from him. But I was not bored. By the same hour, sila mong debate ni Senator Gordon, the long horas, ay di ihinabo, hindi pa rin ako maalis dahil marami po akong nagugunan sa kanilang dalawa. In his valedictorian speech on June 4, 2010, Senator Pong was quoted saying, I do not consider the shadows of my life that long already for me not to say I may return. Senator Pong, you have returned one last time to bid us goodbye. Here in the halls of this August chamber, you have served so well. Senator Pong, yours was a life well spent. An American Unitarian minister, author and lecturer once said, the brave die never, though they sleep in dust. Their courage nerves a thousand living men. Indeed, it is an honor to serve alongside someone of your caliber. Thank you for your friendship, guidance, inspiration, and commitment to our mandate. Rest, rest well, Mr. General Senator, our snappy senator. The Honorable Joan de Lianueva, Senate Majority Floor Leader, will now deliver his eulogy. In Psalms 112, verse 6, it says, For he will never be shaken, the righteous will be remembered forever. Una po sa lahat, haus puso ang pakikiramay at pananalangin sa pamilya ng ating yung mga ong Mahal na Senador Pong Biason, lalo na po kay Tita Monty, kay uh, Mayor Rufi, Brad Rufi, uh, Amrita, and Rino, sa lahat po ng ating mga kababayan sa Mundin Lupa. Makikiisa po tayo kasama ang buong Senado sa milyong-milyong Pilipinong kumatanaw ng malaking utang na loob 
sa kontribusyon sa ating bayan ni Senator Rodolfo G. Diazon. Kailan may hindi makakalimutan ang kanyang integridad, karakter, makakabahang loob, at pagmamahal sa mga Pilipino. I was a college freshman when he first became a senator in 1992. I never did imagine that 15 years later, 15 years after, in 2007, we would be working together in the Commission on Appointments. I was then the minority leader of the House panel. Unlike many of us here, I only had a few encounters with Senator Fong Diazon. Those were learning moments. He was a selfless figure, always willing to sacrifice his interests for the good of others. Like a true mentor, he taught me the tricks of the train, like how and when to invoke or not Section 20 of the Commission on Appointments. The many landmark laws he authored made this country closer to the highest ideals of democracy. He modernized the AFP and raised the dignity of our soldiers. Senator Pong's good chuckles are the most lingering images of him in my mind. Ang sarap po niya kasing tumawa. Ang sarap tignan ng kanyang uh, sense of humor. Nakakahawa po siya. He is indeed a reminder of what the book of Proverbs chapter 17 verse 2 says, A merry heart makes a good countenance. No wonder he had reached the age of 88. Last year, he graced us not only with his presence, but also blessed us with his humor during 106th anniversary of the Philippine Senate at the old Senate Session Hall in the National Museum. Habang nagpipicture taking po ang mga senador doon sa harapan, he accidentally slipped from the stage to the ground. I was one of the first few senators who rushed to check if he's okay, and I'm sure Senator Robin would remember. I was trying to get that glass of wine he was holding, pero ayaw po niyang bitawan. Tumumba, pero walang natapon sa inumin. Sa inumin po niya. Pagtayo po niya, kinirita niya po ako, Joel, mas importanteng isave ang iniinom ko. Alagang ang humor ni Senator Pong, wagas. Yet among all his noble traits, his love for this institution, the People's Senate, is what I admire the most. Hindi po niya ipagkakait ang kanyang wisdom, hindi ka niya ipagkakait ang kanyang panahon para turuan ka, i-mentor ka sa maayos na paraan, sa paraan na magiging komportable ka, sa paraan na siguradong matututo ka. And I'm sure yung mga contemporaries po natin, yung mga young uh, ones dito sa Senado, like Senator Binay, Senator Angara, Senator Robin, Senator JB, Senator Bongo, Senator Villar, yung mga talagang ping nakikita po niya, gusto po niyang turuan, gusto niyang i-impart yung kanyang knowledge. Like the valiant soldier that he is, he fiercely guarded and upheld with his words, demeanor, and deeds. The integrity of this August Chamber in the government of which he was part for more than five decades. Undoubtedly, this man we honor and remember today was a warrior and gentleman. Though molded by poverty and grave hardship in his youth, he made a name for himself in the military and politics. He was indeed what Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2 says, a burning stick snatched from the fire. In my encounters with Tito Pong, Senator Biazon, I came to know the man that he was, a man full of humility, a courageous soldier, a family man, a mentor, a statesman, and a Filipino who lived a life without limits. Senator Biazon's life and career in public service yielded abundant fruits for the Filipino people, as mentioned by so many speakers today. But there are other fruits, his children, especially my brother in Christ, Mayor Rufi, a friend of mine, batchmate also in the House of Representatives, who never failed to give honor to the legacy of his father. Ultimately, the true honor we can give this great man is to carry on his legacies especially on issues that are fully close to his heart, like national defense and security, 
housing, good governance, and education, among others. Senator Pong, Tito Pong, maraming maraming salamat po dahil binigyan niyo po ako ng uh, huwarang titingalain bilang lingkod bayan. Hinding hindi ko po makakalimutan ang mga iniwan niyong aral at inspirasyon habang ako po'y nabubuhay. Maraming salamat po. We eternally salute you, Senator Biazon. May you rest in peace in the assurance that we carry on the legacies of your prolific and fruitful life. Thank you. The Honorable Lauren Legarda, Senate President Pro Tempore, will now deliver her eulogy. Former Senate President Vicente Soto, former Senate President Frank Kim Gilon, esteemed colleagues, Mrs. Monchi Montera Biazon, Mayor Luffy Biazon, and the Biazon family, friends of Manong Pong. To be tasked to deliver a eulogy for a great luminary is such an honor. Today we pay tribute to the life and accomplishment of a great leader who has left an indelible mark from the field in his battle dress uniform to wearing his parong in the halls of the Senate. Senator Rodolfo Pong Biazon dedicated more than half of his life to fighting battles for our country. His dedication to our nation's defense and the well-being of his constituents earned him the respect and admiration of all who knew him. What irony as life presented, a bittersweet synchronicity where our beloved senator breathed his last on Independence Day, a day that represents the values he lived and fought for throughout his lifetime. Senator Pong Biazon's childhood backdrop served as a significant source of inspiration that galvanized his desire to be a true servant of the Filipino people and our country. The proud son of Patak Ilocos Norte, he has the distinction of being the first military general from the Philippine Marine Corps to hold the position of Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. He is admired for his dedication to selflessness and how he was able to gain the affection and trust or people being a former soldier. He possessed a genuine love for our flag and had proven his steadfast commitment to upholding the integrity of our democratic institutions and safeguarding the freedom of our country on many accounts. He served as a senator during the 9th Congress from 1992 to 1995 at the height of my then investigative journalism career. I entered the halls of the Senate three years later in 1998. It was during the 11th Congress that I had the privilege and honor of sharing session discourses with the late senator and had distinct personal recollections with him when I was majority floor leader in the 12th Congress at the time of then Senate President Frank Drillon. I'm forever grateful for the steadfast support and the backing that Senator Biazon extended to me in my endeavors. I am of the opinion that we both uphold, in a way, similar advocacies, particularly in the areas of climate change, disaster risk reduction, as well as national security and defense matters. As a full colonel of the Philippine Air Force Reserve, I am appreciative of his enthusiasm for bolstering the Reserve Corps and recognizing its multifaceted and pivotal role in defense and security. This is something that I distinctly recall and much admire about him. I will never forget his keen interest in national disaster risk reduction management throughout his interpolations. And even after more than two decades, this crucial legislation continues to hold relevance. And I owe its successful enactment to the late Senator's principal sponsorship and endorsement of this measure, and it is in support of our climate change advocacy. Another was the promotion and adoption of the Incheon Resolution in 2011, which aimed at addressing the pressing concerns of escalating disasters and climate change effects on the nation. This critical resolution was championed 
by the Philippine parliamentarians on effective disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation and was signed by 16 members of the House of Representatives then, including the late Senator when he was Congressman at then Representative of Pontinlupa. The Honorable Senator will always be remembered for his sagacity and his contribution to crafting meaningful laws that continue to hold relevance until now. Although there are many laws that can be attributed to his name, I would like to particularly highlight, as my colleagues did, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, which I had the privilege of supporting as the principal sponsor. He will always be one of the pillars of Philippine defense and security who fought for peace and democracy. His selfless service and unwavering commitment to this cause make him stand out as an inspiration to many. He will always be revered and respected as a figure of courage, honor, and patriotism. I will fondly remember him as a true officer and a gentleman. He has always been respectful and kind to me. This farewell is tinged with sadness as I bid goodbye to a valiant warrior and honorable individual who served this country with unwavering loyalty. He fought with all his might and has now completed his journey with grace. As Mayor Rufi said, the bell has rung and the last taps have been sung. As we reflect on the life of the late Senator Rodolfo Biazon, we express our deepest condolences to his family and his loved ones. Though his passing is a great loss for us all and the nation, we find comfort in the legacy that he leaves behind. The Deputy Secretary for Legislation of the Senate, Attorney Edwin Billien, will now read the Senate resolution. Resolution expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolences of the Senate of the Philippines on the death of the Honorable Rodolfo Fong Yi Biaso, former Senator, Congressman, and Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Whereas, the Honorable Rodolfo G. Biasson, former Senator, Congressman, and Military Man, passed away on Independence Day, 12 June 2023, at the age of 80. Let us, born from humble beginnings on 14 April 1935 in Batac, Ilocos Norte, the spouses of Rufino Biasson and Juliana Gaspar, the young Biasson, lost his father at an early age and endured great hardship, particularly during the Japanese regime, to help his family earn a living, peddling food, collecting and selecting used bottles and newspapers. Whereas, the undeterred, whereas undeterred by poverty, he completed his education as a self-supporting student, eventually obtaining a bachelor, a bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Yaki University. Whereas in 1957, despite passing the examinations for the U.S. Military Academy in West Point and U.S. Naval Academy in Maryland, he chose to enter Philippine Military Academy, where he graduated as part of class 1961. Whereas as a military man, he proved himself to be an able and effective leader, serving as superintendent of the PMA, PMA from 1986 to 1987, Commandant of the Philippine Marine Corps from 1987 to 1989. Commanding General of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, National Capital Region Defense Command from 1988 to 1990. AFP Vice Chief of Staff from 1990 to 1991 and ultimately as AFP Chief of Staff in 1991. Whereas as Commanding General of the AFP NCR Defense Command and Commandant of the PMC, he rose to prominence when he successfully led the Marines and other civilian officers in thwarting the Kulita attempt states with a reform the armed forces movement. Whereas throughout his military career, he, re he received numerous awards and recognition, 
for his bravery and exemplary service, chief among them, the Philippine Republic Presidential Unit Citation. The Distinguished Service Star and the Gold Cross Medal, as well as the various medals for anti-dissidence campaigns across the country. Whereas after retiring from military service, he continued to devote himself to public service, being elected Senator for three terms, and during which he served as chairperson of the Senate Committees on National Defense and Security, Urban Planning, Housing and Industrial Development, and as well as Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Agriculture and Food and Foreign Relations, while also being a member of 15 other Senate committees, as well as the Commission on Appointments. Whereas he also extended his legislative expertise in broader areas of parliamentary cooperation, serving as the President of the Regional Council for Asia Global Parliamentarians so on, on Habitat, and the co-chairperson of the Philippine Legislature Committee of Population and Development Foundation, Inc. Whereas as a senator, he was known to be a steadfast champion of decent and affordable housing and security and defense, and was instrumental in the passage of several landmark measures, such as the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003, Rental Reform Act of 2002, on the loop up for two terms. Whereas the retired soldier never stopped being a patriot, continuing to offer invaluable insight and expertise on matters of national concern, such as the Marawi issues and the West Philippine Sea dispute. Whereas true to the saying that all soldiers never die, they just fade away, the legendary military general and legislator whose bravery and patriotism in protecting and defending Philippine freedom and democracy is beyond compare, and whose sincerity and dedication in serving the country inspired and touched the hearts of Filipinos will be mourned and remembered by the Philippine people and the nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the Philippines to express its profound sympathy and sincere condolences on the death of the Honorable Rodolfo Wong G. Piazza, former senator, congressman, chief of staff, the armed forces of the Philippines. Result required the copy of this resolution be furnished to the review family of the late senator Rodolfo Wong G. Piazza. The Senate President Pro Tempore and all incumbent senators present will now present the resolution to the family of the late former Senator, Rodolfo G. Piazza.
The Honorable Juan Miguel F. Zubini, Senate President, will now deliver his eulogy. extraordinary life and legacy of Senator Paul Diazzo. It's not quite enough to say that he wore many hats. As a Marine, Kuma Monchi, Bayer Rufi, Richie, Reno, and the entire Diazun family. I'm very sorry that I'm unable to be at the service today as I'm president of official business in Washington, D.C. to meet our counterparts in the U.S. legislature. But I want to send my deepest condolences to you all, and I join the rest of the country in celebrating the extraordinary life and legacy of Senator Paul Biasso. It's not quite enough to say that he wore many hats, as a Marine, as a Chief of the Armed Forces, as a Congressman, and as a Senator. He didn't just wear these hats, rather, he lived his entire life embodying the very essence of these roles and being a public servant par excellence. Maybe that was the military man in you, ready to serve 24 seven. He dedicated himself so completely to his work, to our people and to our country, not just because of his job called for him to do so, but simply because he so fiercely loved our country and our people. That is how I will always remember him, an absolute patriot on and off the battlefield. And I'm so grateful that I got to witness him in action on the Senate floor, as I had the honor of working alongside him when we were both in the Senate during the 14th Congress. At that time, he had already been a veteran legislator with a storied military career, and I was still a novice senator with a lot to learn. I could not have asked for a better set of mentors to guide me as a Senate upstart. Senator Pong, in particular, was always very gracious with his guidance and always ready to cooperate and help out, especially when I was still finding my footing as a first-time majority leader. Napakalaking bagay po sa akin ang tulong at tiwala ni Senator Pong at that time. He was an accomplished general with a long record of stellar leadership under his belt. And to have his support was as humbling as it was galvanizing. I deeply admired how he stood by his beliefs and principles and how he chose to build and not burn bridges. And I will always remember the last time I saw him during our Senate reunion dinner last November. He was as sharp and astute as the day I first met him and just as engaged with the welfare of our country as anyone currently in public office. It really dawned on me how Senator Pong loved and honored this country with his entire being. And we will continue to love and honor him in return by upholding the peace and freedom that he fought for and the progress he worked towards. Aya, maraming maraming salamat po. Senator Pong, saludo po ako sa iyo. On behalf of the family of the late former Senator Rodolfo G. Biazon, the Honorable Rosano Rufino B. Biazon will deliver the response.
to the distinguished and honorable incumbent and former members of the Philippine Senate. Good morning. Best felicitations are likewise extended to the diligent and hardworking staff of the Secretariat of this prestigious institution who have made this necrological service possible. It is difficult to say goodbye to a loved one, especially if it is a permanent separation, such as one brought about by death. It is a cocktail of emotions, taking the person left behind from one end of the spectrum to the other. Sadness, joy, anxiety, fear, denial, and acceptance. On the day that the country celebrated the anniversary of its independence, which earned us the freedom that we enjoy to this very day, our beloved Rodolfo Gaspar Biazon, former Armed Forces Chief of Staff, former member of the Philippine Senate in the 9th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th Congresses, and former member of the Philippine House of Representatives in the 15th and 16th Congress, was called to report to his creator. It is tempting to think that the man who made it a lifetime career to defend freedom and democracy and go against those who attacked or threatened him purposely chose June 12th. 2023 as his departure date to the next life. Indeed, it was a day of freedom for him, freedom from the pains and suffering of this world. It was a day of independence as well, independence from the tools of medicine that helped him to sustain life, but not really live life. His 30 years of soldiering was spent laying his life on the line ready to pay the ultimate sacrifice def defending freedom and democracy using military means as necessary. But his next 21 years as a legislator were likewise spent defending freedom and democracy, but this time through the power of words and discourse. Same tasks, different tools. I think it will not be an exaggeration nor a lie to say that he accomplished those tasks and did him well. In fact, his former colleagues and members of this respected institution has already said so. The general, the senator, the congressman, which title should we call him? And let me tell you a story. Don't worry, this is not going to be as long as how my father tells stories. <laughs> Number one, one time he was at a speaking engagement and he was asked how he wanted to be addressed given his many titles as I have listed. His answer was simple. He said, well, those three positions are important to me. So let's just use all three. Generator man. Number two, he was very proud of being a general, in spite of the three titles of the attorney. So one time, when I just finished my uh, pictorial for my being, being uh, the commissioner of customs, I proudly showed him the portrait with me in the uniform of the commissioner of customs, having four stars on my shoulder. And I told him, Baba, four stars na rin ako. And then he just looked at me with a black stare and said, yung four stars ko, for 30 years of blood, sweat, and tears, ikaw inamoy ka lang. <laughs> Number three. These are stories uh, of the intimate relationship between uh, the father and the son. Um, I heard earlier that uh, our, our senators say that the senator, Senator Biason, was intimidating. But you know, there was one member of the house who was not intimidating. There was one time that this, that, that senator and that congressman were engaged in a debate 
on a particular hill, the Philippine Coast Guard Road. Philippine Coast Guard Road. It reached the Baikan, and the senator and the congressman faced each other in the bicameral conference with him. The congressman would not let the senator have his way. And the senator would not give way as well. So it took uh, quite a debate uh, compelling uh, one of the, the members of the committee, Senator Green, was compelled to say, why don't the two gentlemen have a bike out in their own house? So the relationship between uh, my father and I uh, also goes beyond uh, just a mere father and son relationship. It was of mutual respect and admiration between two colleagues, because that's how he is. He would respect you as you are, and he would not use his being the father to simply bully me. Number four. He remains simple. I guess all, most of you who know how he is personally, he remains simple. He was never changed by power. He was never changed by the privileges of power. He was on a In fact, on that day that he was brought to the hospital, his personal belongings were collected. They were gathered. And eventually, he was, they were given back to us when he was released from the hospital. He was an embargo. He was among those items in the personal belongings. He was a lighter and a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> he never changed. I know that I was on the platform. Of course, immediately, a lot of people called me up right then and there. Um, Worried because he did not have to be brought to the hospital, and so I called him, and uh, I was trying to convince him to go to the clinic at least. He said, "Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm nothing broken." But I said, "You know, for seniors like you, it's you know, it's, it's a concern if you fall." He said, "Don't worry, Marine Seton." I did a parachute landing for him. That's how he is. He is a warrior and a gentleman. One who knows when to use the wrath of a warrior and when to use the geniality of a gentleman. In a similar duality, he is also a serious worker and a funny father. That's how we know him. However he may be called, we would like him to be remembered as a simple public servant who had no other desire but to complete the task given to him, fulfill the duty he assumed, and produce the results expected from him. The family has nothing but the most sincere appreciation for the senators who have given their testimony in this august chamber in praise of a man who dedicated his productive years to serving the Filipino people. From my, from my mom, Mama Mochi, my sister Richie, my brother Lino, my in-law Herb, of course my wife Nina, our children, our common kids, and Papa Hindi niyo kung pa masyado nakikilala, yung kapatid po ni Senator Biaso, ay hindi ko nakaupo doon sa Dita Tulsin. Tignan niyo yung mukha, isang hulmahan. These distinguished ladies and gentlemen are persons who worked with him, debated and discussed with him, observed his performance, and made conclusions about him. All of us in the Biasan family are grateful and honored for the kind words that you have told about our father. Those words are the ones that will carry us through this difficult time. Just like many other stories that we have encountered during the past several days, when visitors would line up 
in view of the body of Senator Jackson. Their stories about their interactions help sustain us to go through this time. In the days leading to his internment, it is fitting that the Senate become one of the stops that function his journey to eternity. It is an institution he loved and served with. It is an institution that became his channel to accomplish his duty to the country. Let me quote. When bells for us are rung and our last taps is sung, let generations see our countries, our country free. The cavaliers here know this by heart. This is something that my father has always, always put value in. That's why every opportunity to go to the PMA for a homecoming, he would want to go. Last January 28, we were at the PMA to launch his book. He chose to bring it to the PMA first and talk to the cadets. Because as mentioned earlier, the institution of the Philippine Military Academy is where he believed we should be raising soldiers that are true patriots. Well, his bell has already been rung, so the last taps has been sung. He is a faithful servant who has fought the good fight and has finished the race. There has been he has been known as the goat of his class. For a while, he just let it be. But actually, he's number eight from the bottom. But now there's a new meaning of being the goat of the class. He is the greatest of all time. He is Rodolfo Gaspar. Yes. Thank you very much.
the necrological service in honor of the late Senator Adolfo Piazon is hereby declared closed.